The Soweto Uprising was a series of demonstrations and protests led by black school children in South Africa that began on the morning of 16th June 1976. Students from various schools began to protest in streets of Soweto in response to intro introduction of Afrikaans as the medium of instruction in black schools. A boy called Hector Peterson was shot by the police and sparked a series of events which eventually led to the end of apartheid years later. Meledi and Tiro's baby sister, Dimio, was very sick. Their mother worked very far away in the city of Joburg. So their auntie and grandmother looked after them. Can't we take Dinio to the hospital? Dinio is too sick to be carried that far and we don't have the money to pay a doctor. Feeling very worried, Naledi and Tiro decided to travel to Joburg to get their mother without telling anyone. They started walking. They found the road hard going and the hot road burnt their feet. A friendly driver offered them a lift to go back on the street road. Where are you kids going? We're walking to Johannesburg. Are you crazy? That's more than 250 kilometers away. The children explained. Hmm, it'll take you a week to walk there. Okay, hop on, I'll take you to Joburg. Thank, Thank you. you. The journey passed quickly. They discussed how their mother worked in Joburg to pay for them to go to school. They told the driver that uh, their father had worked in uh, a mine and died of coughing sickness. <coughs> this must be Joburg. This is where I stop. Where does your mother work? Parktown. I'm late for my delivery, otherwise I would take you there myself. There's a bus stop around the corner of Parktown. Come, I'll show you. He gave the children some money for the bus. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Are you stupid? The signs on the bus. This bus is not for you. A lady called Grace showed them uh, where to get the right bus. She was outspoken uh, and angry about uh, apartheid. They talked about the dangers of the police and how people always needed to carry their ID. Beware, Beware that, that policeman, he, he wants to see your pass. pass. He'll, He'll say it's not an order. order, the, the day, day might be your last. Finally, they reached the house where Mama worked. The children were reunited with their mother, Joyce. You can't leave now, Joyce. You can go tomorrow. Your kids can't stay here. Grace said they could stay with her. Grace and the children got on a busy train to Soweto. Naledi and Tiro got to Grace's house and met her brothers. The children asked about a photo on their wall. In the photograph was Grace's brother, Doomy. Grace began to tell the story of Doomy. This is my brother, Doomy. During the time of fire, I marched with Doomy in the streets with thousands of other school children. Hundreds were killed by the police, hundreds were wounded, and hundreds were arrested, including Doomy. After his release, he disappeared. They later got a letter saying he was safe and living in another country. The children met Mama at the train station and began the journey home. Mama paid for a car to take them to their house to collect Dinio 
and then take them to the hospital. When they arrived, they had to queue for a long time to see a doctor. Mama and Naledi had to leave Dino at the hospital and return in three days because she was very sick. Mama went to the hospital and the children stayed and waited for her to return. The days passed slowly. Excitedly, they saw Mama return and carry a Dino on her back. It's Mama. It is. Dino's on her back. The family was worried about paying back the money they had borrowed, as well as making sure that Dino had enough milk and fruit. Tyro wondered if he was old enough to work and help. Nalady decided she wanted to be a doctor and help people. She thought about how the journey to Joburg had saved Dino's life and had opened her eyes so much.